So now I want to show you how to break up your rendered multi-channel EXR file into its several render layers or render passes, better to say. And later on I want to show you how you combine them all together to get the exact image which was rendered in V-Ray. So first of all let's have a look at our layer contact sheet. I know we have a lot of render passes and we won't use all of them. It's just for the compositing artist nice to have a lot of passes so they get a, or have a lot of freedom. And as a 3D artist it's rather easy to create passes. So for the compositing artists, artists it's, it's nice to have a lot of them. To break file image into its render passes I use shuffle nodes and shuffle nodes extract data of your file image so connect your shuffle node to your rendered image and in the input you have a list of all render passes which are in your EXR file so for instance if I want to show you my ambient occlusion pass choose it in the list and look through your shuffle node and you can see the occlusion which was rendered with B-Ray Dirt and you've got your UV pass uh, normals, reflection, whatever you want are in here. So for a simple composite what you have to do is choose your GI which is this one, your global illumination, your indirect lighting, whatever you want to call it and then you just quickly rename this one to GI, duplicate that and hook it up again to your render. Next up you will select your reflection. Rename this to reflection. Copy and paste this one, whatever. Reflection. And for this render, these three passes suffice for a simple composite. So now you have to merge them together. So the merge node adds two nodes together, A and B. And I want to plus them together and choose the plus, which is the same as add and look through that. So now I have my GI and my reflection pass. So now I will duplicate my merge node and do the same. A and B and plus them together and look through that. And don't forget to change f uh, in your shuffle nodes your corresponding passes you want, so refraction. So now if you look through my composited merge node you see this result and if I select my file render node and press 1 you see that. So this is now in viewer 1, this is now in viewer 2, I can also put them up in here so you can see an exact wipe and you can see there's no difference between them, nothing at all, they are exactly the same. So you might ask yourself why do you go through all this trouble just to create the same result again? The answer is pretty simple. Now you have the ability to, for instance, change the amount of reflection on your car without you have to re-render it. So in my reflection pass, if I add a gray node, which is a simple color correction node, and I reduce my gain on my reflections, you can see the reflection are being dimmed out until there's no reflection at all. So all you have left is your GI and your refraction pass. So if you want to add reflection again, you can increase the gain and you get reflection. If you want to increase it a lot, you can get a lot of reflection. So it becomes very handy to simply adjust reflections, refractions and stuff like that. So if I now want to change the color of my car, I can hook up 
a color correct node into my GI, which is this one. And in V-Ray or in my 3D package in Maya, I rendered out some material ID passes. And this one here, you can see the green is where my paint is. So the green um, material ID pass is my car color. So what I can do is go into my color correction node and mask out just the green channel of the material ID number 14. So if I correct now the green channel, let's say with the gain, you can see that my color is being increased or decreased and it's just a diffuse color. So you can now, if you want to change the color of your vehicle, so I want it blue, red or green, it's very easy as just adjusting a color slider. Okay, what if you want to change your diffuse color of the car, let's say it's a, called the base color, and you want to change your GI amount. This wouldn't be possible with this com composition. So for that to change your GI separately, you have to set up a different node tree. But we can keep that one as a simple node tree for simple color adjustments or reflection or refraction adjustments. For most users, this is probably enough, but if you want to add more or have much more control in your rendered image, I show you a advanced node tree. So I just keep them close to this node, just copy the same rendered image again. So I've got two versions. And now I want to show you how you create your own GI. So to do that, you want to first um, shuffle out a new, uh, first of all, shuffle out a new render pass, which is called raw GI, which looks like this. And we name that one to raw GI. The raw GI and the diffuse pass are multiplied together to create a GI pass. So choose my diffuse, rename this one to diffuse, and look through that, which looks like this. And now if I select both nodes and hit M for merge, and I multiply them, I get my GI pass which should be the same as my previous GI pass. Except you see some edging. As you can see, they are not matching. The problem is you have an aliased pass, which you can't use because V-Ray renders your GI, your raw GI pass with aliasing, but you want it without. So if when you in the end multiply them together, you won't get this problem here, which you can see very clearly. To create your raw GI without aliasing, you have to create it from scratch. It sounds difficult, but it's rather easy. I just quickly rename my node here to GI passes. And I want to show you how you do that now. Let's delete this shuffle node, which is my raw GI, because I want to create that from scratch. And to do that, I just copy this diffuse node, rename this one to uh, GI original, original, and hook it up with my rendered image. So a raw GI pass is the same as GI divided by diffuse. So merge them together and divide them. 
So now I have my raw. Don't forget to change your shuffle note from diffuse to GI. Otherwise you will get a result like this, which is not what you want. So now it's changed to GI. And now I get a raw, correct, not aliased, raw GI pass. You can see the difference. My edges are jagged, not aliased. And if I now see my original GI, which is very smooth, uh, sorry, my raw GI, I first have to shuffle that out. So this is my original raw GI pass. And this is my new raw pass. You can see there's a color shift, but it's the correct way because they are, uh, multi are divided together properly. Oops. There you go. So now if you want to create your new GI pass, you take your diffuse and multiply it by your newly created raw GI. So just take the input of B, hook it up with diffuse, and now you have a GI pass, which is the same as my original GI pass. As you can see, I'm looking now through this shuffle node, which is a GI, global illumination node, and I look into my composited GI pass, and there's exactly, oh, they are exactly the same. There's no color shifting, exactly the same. So no problems anymore with this aliasing. So this is now my GI and we have to do the same procedure for my reflection and refraction pass. So what you can do is instead of going through the same procedure all the time, you can simply copy your node tree, copy and paste it and put it underneath and paste it again for your refraction and hook it up with your original image. So I just make it a bit clearer and put my knobs so it's better to see. And this one as well. And this one as well. And those as well. So it's just a bit more organized and you can see how the flow works. So you just have to rename everything correctly. So my raw, oh, where you are? Here's my raw GI, my diffuse, which gives me my final GI. So now I want to go to reflection. Reflection. Original. And choose it in here, reflection. And the diffuse has to go to my reflection. filter and choose it in here which gives me my raw reflection which looks like this as you can see the aliasing isn't off so I've got jagged lines and edges which is what you want because if not we would get uh, some edging and some black alpha edges which we don't want so just quickly rename this to raw reflection which then the same raw reflection divided by my reflection filter I multiply it gives me my reflection pass which is the same as my reflection pass in here as you can see there's no difference at all the same for my refraction which is my refraction original divided oh and my I'm a bit too fast this one is refraction this one the diffuse goes to my refraction filter those two are divided to give our raw refraction 
raw oops divide so now this is my raw refraction as you can see it's nice not aliased lines those are the raw refraction and my refraction filtering multiplied gives us the refraction pass and this one is the reflection pass probably a mistake again somewhere down the line refraction you I forgot to change my refraction so this one should be my refraction filtering and now you can see a working refraction pass which should be the same as our simple node tree and it is so now we have to merge them together with a simple merge node so merge a and b with a plus operation so now I have my reflection above or on top of my GI and now the same with my refraction merge node again A and B and plus and look through that one so now we have the same exact image as our rendered image which is this one and this one there is no change and also the same as our simple node tree which is this one so what we did now we created first of all a simple node tree where you can do simple adjustments adjustments like reducing reflection or changing your color of your car and a more advanced one where you can uh, change for instance or reduce the GI of your shot or change the GI mood color or you can change the raw reflection or you can adjust the reflection filter where you can which shows where object, objects are being reflected or not so you can change that you've got a lot more freedom with a, a bit more advanced notary so so now I want to show you if you how to reduce your GI in your shot so what you have to do is simply reduce your GI pass, your raw GI pass, which is this one. So you add a grade node between the GI and the final GI pass and just reduce the gain. So my car gets less global illumination or indirect lighting. So my GI gets darker, as you can see here. And in my final result, the image looks like this like it's not being lit at all if you want to, to increase your light just increase your great gain and you get a way more lit GI pass which I couldn't have done in here because I don't have my raw pass in here but you can also now change the color if you like from your diffuse just simply create a color node color correct node plug it up in here and change your color of your gain so now you can see it changes everything because I didn't mask it yet but it's very easy just double click go to ranges on the mask choose your green whatever node and now it masks out only my base color so this is probably the same as this one but you still have more freedom so now I want to show you a cool trick okay now I want to show you a cool trick if you want to use the same advanced notary for different renderings or previous ones whatever you could copy all your nodes and paste them in a new nuke script but what you can also do is you can combine all of them in a new node and use the new node all the time but first of all you have to make sure that you just have one input node now I have a lot more like, like 6 or something so what I always do is create a new knob 
and connect all my inputs to this new knob. So they all connect to this one and the knob connects to my rendered image. So I can place them here so you can see how my flow works. So my rendered image goes into all the nodes and, and ends up in this one here, which is my final output node. So my stream is going like this. Just want to make it clearer where my flow is. So now what you can do is you select all your nodes and hit Control and G, which groups them. And it asks you to select an output node. I want my final output node to be the end of that. So now you've got a new node called group one. Let's rename this one to advanced comp whatever comp. And now if you have a new rendered image with the same render passes which are in VRay all the same, you can just hook up a new image and and you and you get out a composited image back. So now you have a new node created and if you want to change your color stuff you can just go into that node by hitting the S button here on top and the node is opened. Another cool feature is if you want to change the color now but you don't always have to go back into your advanced node tree you can create a color correct node in here rename this one to car color only and then you go back to your node graph um, manage user knobs and go and pick and now you see all my nodes in my advanced node tree and at the bottom you see the car color and now you can change in the color correct node um, you have to look up for the gain and click OK. So now you can see you have a gain slider in here, which is the color of my car. And you can do that with whatever. You can go back and um, create a new knob or a new gray node. Um, oops. No, it's great. And reduce your reflection. So if you want to do that, you insert a new node. Let's call it just a grade. And if I reduce now my um, gray again, my reflections are reduced. So back to one, call this one reflection amount and go back to your node graph in the advanced comp. And you can go to right click, manage user knobs, pick a knob, go to the bottom, reflection amount, and choose gain. Uh, is it gain? Probably yes. And hit OK. Done. So now you have two gains in here. The one is for your reflection. As you can see, you can reduce that or increase that. And the other one is your color of your car. So now you have customized a node where you can change your car color or your reflection color as easy as that and this one let's set it back to one I control click how was that control click somewhere shift click shift click so now it's this is my default image this is my rendered image and my composited image so they are exactly the same So now I want to show you my final comp, which I did for the car, because now you understand how everything works, I can show you what I did for my rendered image. So here's my rendered image, my first one. And this is my multi-compositing node, which I just showed you how I created that. So it looks like this. I've, it's a bit more complex. I added 
uh, raw lighting, which is diffuse divided by lighting, and then the raw lighting multiplied by the diffuse gives me my lighting pass, and which is added on top. Because I didn't have direct lighting, it's just black. But for future renderings, when I use, let's say, area lights or viewer rectangular lights, it won't be black. There will be some information in here and it will add up correctly. Um, next up, I have the reflection, the refraction, and at the bottom I have specular, which is also now black because there's no specular in my car, and self-illumination, which is also none. But I just added them in case for future renderings. So I have my advanced node or compositing node tree for simple re or for renderings. Here's my output. They are all being added together and then I come out with this yellow color. And this is the yellow color. I don't have the knob yet, so just it uses to its original color, just maybe make it a bit more white whitish. And now they are not don't now they don't match because I have already adjusted something on that. So now you can see what I did here is so I because I have some material IDs for all my objects, I can increase the BMW logo. Same on my rims. Next up I change my number plate because it was way too dark with a mask and a color crack node it's very easy to just increase that this is my ambient occlusion is my original render I shuffled out the occlusion and merged it on top to on my car so with occlusion you get a lot more detail in your ridges as you can see here yeah, on the door handles way more detail Uh, next up, I have a background image, which is this one. In in my 3D package, I used or I created a camera which was aligning to this camera which shot this photo. So my car was rendered in a correct perspective. Then I merged them together and I got something like this. This is now the merged car on top. And now I added some um, lights. I did them in um, After Effects with the plugin called Optical Flares. I placed or I exported this, or I just used the EX off of this one here, put it in After Effects, added some flares on top, and rendered them out as on black. And a nuke, I just plus them over to get a result like this. And then I use the Z defocus node in Nuke to add depth of field. So I ran it out a, a Z pass or a depth pass in, in Maya, which hooks up in here in my depth node. I can quickly show it up in here probably. And this is how it looks coming out from my you can see the, the darker red is closer to the camera and the brighter red is um, away from the camera and then I just added some simple color correction nothing too special so this is how my final render looks like obviously uh, I just created that to show you how compositing works with the V-Ray render passes you could change the, or you could relight your scene with the normal pass, or change some, or added some textures to that. Whatever you like, Nuke is a very powerful tool, and it's all possible to do that after your renderings. So that's a tutorial for Nuke. If you liked the tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to encourage me to create new tutorials for the future. So thank you guys for watching and until the next tutorial, bye.